How you doing, fam? Bam, this is Chris Mizo here. It's going to be an exciting October. You know exactly why. Because Intel is going to release their 15th gen soon, Arrow Lake. And what's going to be exactly different about it? This video is not going to really be about the processor side. Instead, we're going to focus on the chipset. We're going to focus on the motherboards. Because the chipsets are going to be completely different from the Z690 in the Z790. Exactly how so? It's just the Z890, just a slight number upgrade, just like the 690 from 790. Now, if I bore you with any of these details, please feel free to go down to the timestamps right down below because you may already know some of the information that I'm about to share with you. If you don't, just make sure you stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you exactly what the difference is. First, I'm gonna start off with the socket because it is LGA 1700, which was the DZ 690 and the Z 790. It's completely different from the LGA 1851. LGA 1851 has 151 extra pins in there. So it's not gonna be really that great for your processors. And exactly what fits in the Z 690 and the Z 790? Well, the 12th, 13th, and the 14th gen, which is Alder Lake, Raptor Lake, and all the refreshes. Now for the new 15th gen to about the 17th gen, just to say, for keepsake, it's not for sure how long they'll continue this generation for, but we can say Meteor Lake, Arrow Lake, Lunar Lake are going to be processors for these motherboards. Now they do have different specifications and different features. Now when the Z690, it was a breakthrough. Intel was the first chipset that actually had PCI Express 5.0. That also had NVMe 2, which was PCI Express 5.0, but the capabilities, you can never fully extend it. Even in the Z790 boards, or even the Z790 Plus or the Z790 Max, when they came out with their last iteration, which was of 2023, the only difference was that they did upgrade the Wi-Fi chipset, which was from Wi-Fi 6E, typically to Wi-Fi 7, the Bluetooth drivers, and a few little minor updates. Now, for those who have those chipsets are more than familiar that we don't really utilize PCI Express 5.0 all the way. Why exactly? It's because there was a limitation for that. So through the 12th to the 14th gen currently, you can only use it for X16 speeds. So if you were to use up another PCI Express slot, just say it's going to break it down to X8 instead of the full X16. And same to the NVMe usage of PCI Express 5. So if you were to use PCI Express 5, which is typically X4, then it will still split the PCI Express down to X8. That was the limitation for it. The memory bandwidth was also new, which was DDR5, which had a standard of 4,800 mega transfers per second. But then later generations, we were able to push to further boundaries. Now I'm going to talk about the Z890 and the future chipsets for Intel. Now the biggest difference with the newer chipsets, the display drivers are gonna be completely different for Arrow Lake, which is the 15th gen that is going to be released. And on top of it, there is no more limitation for X16 PCI Express 5. Finally, you can use it to maximum bandwidth because it is supposed to have up to X20 PCI Express. So you can be able to use X16 speeds of PCI Express 5 if you really need to, more than likely, we're probably not gonna need it, even with the new NVIDIA 50 series coming out, it's probably more than likely still gonna be PCI Express 4 because we still don't utilize fully a PCI Express 5. Okay, forget about that rant. Well, anyway, to get to the point, if you're using PCI Express 5 and you're using an NVMe, you don't have to worry about any type of split of power when it comes to your motherboard. That is the biggest difference between the two. I know it doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but there is another, the standard mega transfers for Intel's newest chipset is going to be 5,600 mega transfers. Now this is just standard transfer speeds that you can expect at the minimum. Latency is expected to be much more improved. And on top of it, you can take advantage of some of the newer drivers and especially my favorite part personally is the Thunderbolt ports because that is highly needed especially when it comes 
to Intel's chipsets. It's something you could really take advantage for, especially for those creators out there. Now I'm gonna give you some examples here. And if you're interested in any of these motherboards, make sure to check down in the description box down below because I do have them. The biggest difference is going to be the price. No, let me get serious here. I'm gonna go with the smallest difference first, which is gonna be the MSI Tomahawk. If you take a look at the overclock speeds, it can go up to 9,200 mega transfers per second. That is amazingly quick compared to its maximum of their Z790 board, which was the 7,800 mega transfers. And on top of it, they upgraded the ethernet port to five gigabits per second versus the 2.5 gigabits per second. You do have a slight difference in sound drivers or in the sound chip, which is on the Z890 as the ALC 1220P versus the ALC 4080. Now it sounds bad, but I promise you, it's really not that bad. The biggest difference is that actually the 1220P has a better DAC and the ALC 4080 is just a single chip audio codec. So instead it uses a built-in USB. The difference also is that you have one PCI Express 5 and 3X PCI Express 4 compared to the Z790. Now you do have two Thunderbolt C display ports versus the one HDMI port and one display port for the onboard graphics of Intel. On top of it, you have more USB-C than USB-A, but you do have less USB-A ports. You do have one PCI Express 5 for slot 2, PCI Express 4 versus the PCI Express 5, and two PCI Express 3 slots. It includes a Thunderbolt 5 connector. So for those who want to take advantage of Thunderbolt 5 once it releases, you certainly can. For the biggest differences of gigabytes motherboards is that you do have a 9,500 mega transfers per second. Then the standard for it is up to 6,400 mega transfers versus the 8,266 of mega transfers and 4,800 mega transfers versus the standard Z790. On top of it, you have two Intel Thunderbolt 4 ports. It has a HDMI for display versus just one display port on the Z790. You will also split the PCI Express bandwidth on this motherboard, but I can't really go into details why. I had to look into the motherboard more to see exactly why, because when you occupy the M2D, the CPU, then it will split the power. Now it does have PCI Express 4 versus the PCI Express 3 on the Z790. On the Z890, you just have the Intel Wi-Fi 7 versus the Z790 where it has Qualcomm Wi-Fi 7 plus other chipsets. It uses Bluetooth 5.4 on Gigabyte's Z890 versus the 5.3 and plus an extra NVMe slot for you to use. On top of it, you have two USB 4 ports, which is completely new. If you followed, or if you have a Z690 and Z790, you know that was completely missing. And USB 4 is going to be USB-C ports, not gonna be USB-A ports anymore. It has six USB 3.2 ports, and it has six USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one USB 3.2 Gen port, versus the eight USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, the one chipset of six USB 2.0 versus the one 3.2 Gen 1 USB-C, seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And there is no need for any Thunderbolt expansion compared to the Z790 4 gigabytes or master. You had to purchase the expansion card to take advantage of any quicker speeds such as USB 4. Now the biggest board I gotta say, and it's quite impressive, is Ace Rock's Tai Chi motherboard, because you gotta hear these differences here. Now the Z790 has a higher phase count compared to the Z890. They do use a lower phase count, minus and plus five amps. You had 20K black caps versus the 12K black caps, but they both are Japanese constructed. You have Wi-Fi 7 versus the 6E. And on top of it, you have no front panel type C fast charging for the Tai Chi Z890. And it does have a BIOS flashback button on the Z890. It supports up to 9,200 mega transfers per seconds on overclock compared to the standard 7,200 mega transfers. It also has two X PCI Express 5 
X16 slots on the Z790. But again, you're not going to use the full power. There is a slight upgrade from the auto from direct drive technology on the front headphone port, which is up to 600 ohms. On top of it, the Z890 has up to two USB 3.2 Gen 2, eight 3.2 Gen 1 Z890 ports, and it has also 10 3.2 Gen 1 ports. On top of it, the Gen 5 NVMe without loss of power, SATA cables, versus the eight that the Z790 had. Very minuscule difference that you will see between the two, it has three thermo resistor cables. That's going to be to check out the temperature, two CPU fan connectors versus the one CPU fan connector and a AIO pump slash water pump. It's still not slow either one of them. So if you want to go for the bigger budget, but you won't see a big large difference in price, because I will post the prices in the description next to my link. As a one M2 expansion card and a RGB splitter. Now, when you really compare all the specs together, you can see how different it is. Now, remember the most important thing is to not try to put a other like processor inside of a Z890 or vice versa. It might come out with some pretty bad results that I don't think anyone would appreciate and you don't want to waste money to send your motherboard in to get repaired over something like that. Fam man, guys, if you are interested in any of these motherboards, make sure you check down in the description box down below. If you, you know anybody else who is into PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them and also make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more if not part of the big wonderful fan man. And also make sure you follow my X channel right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as I will post all the newest updates on there as well. What are your thoughts about Intel's newest processors? Are you excited for it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.